If we watch this clip right now, I'm not gonna have the audio play for copyright reasons, obviously. On the edges of the frame, there is chromatic aberration. There's like blur and it looks vintage. Yet, what I found out from a little bit of research, that is a completely digital post-production look. They were not shot on vintage lenses that would give that initial look. They're actually shot on Airy Master Prime lenses, which are known to be super sharp and nice. So in this video, we're talking about how to do that. Let's hop in Premiere Pro and we'll just break it down. It takes about two minutes. So I have this shot in my Premiere Pro timeline. Let's play it. It's a nice shot, looks great. But how do we add this effect to it? So first and foremost, let's go ahead to our timeline and our project over here. Drag your adjustment layer or right click down here, make an adjustment layer and then bring it on here. Drag it to the length of your timeline, your clip, whatever you wanna make those effect applied to. And then on that adjustment layer, we wanna go ahead and add a channel blur. Maybe you could have guessed by now, but that's what we're doing. Scroll down, channel blur. Let's click and drag it onto the adjustment layer. Effect controls, scroll down. And now we have channel blur. We're gonna duplicate this, so add two of them. So. Command C and then Command V, now there's two of them. On the first channel blur, we are going to take the red blurriness and I personally find that like 25 works, maybe 20-ish works just fine. And I wanna make sure that is only on horizontal. And then on channel blur, again, I want to take the red blurriness, add like 10 and then blue blurriness and add like 15. And I wanna make that on the vertical. So if we turn this on and off, this is before, that's after, before, after. It's super, super subtle. And in fact, what I wanna go ahead and do is duplicate this channel blur again for the red layer, so the top one. Command C, Command V. Now there's two of them. And if we expand this, you can see that it's a lot more prominent red-wise than it was a second ago. And that's kind of like a better look. So now that we have channel blur, channel blur, channel blur, I'm gonna shrink these down to make them a little bit easier to work with. All we wanna go ahead and do is go to our opacity and make a mask. Grab the circle, that's kind of like a perfect shape obviously for this. Go ahead and drag the mask into an oval. Perfect, now we have our mask in the shape of an oval, kind of like getting a vignette, if you would, on our footage. However, instead of a vignette, we have the chromatic aberration and we want to invert this mask. So now that anything in the circle, in the mask, won't be affected and everything outside of it will, which means the edges will have the chromatic effect to it. If I turn this off, you can see that the look is there, but this might work on this shot because there's trees and it's kind of not easy to see that line, but on like a very open shot or like let's say the sky, you'll very much so see that border and we don't want that. So back on the adjustment layer, go down to opacity again, click the mask and then change your mask feather to something really crazy because we want that super soft transition from like aberration to none. So I'm gonna do like 300 roughly speaking and I think that that is usually okay. And then we wanna take the mask and I actually wanna go back about 100, so negative 100. That kind of affects, you know, more of the edges, less of the center of the frame. And for me, this is like the look I think that looks good and similar to the shot. And now, you know, you have your, your aberration here. You might not think it's enough going on yet. And that's fair because in the shot, in the show, it's a lot softer and there's a little bit more blur and actually some like radial looking blur, directional blur if you would. So we're gonna go ahead and add directional blur. Click it, double click, drop it on the adjustment layer, go back to effect controls. And again, we're gonna duplicate this, but first and foremost, take directional blur, let's make the direction 45 and then change the blur to about five. Drag that on top of all the channel blurs. So let's go ahead and drag and duplicate it. And now we wanna take this one, make it negative, so negative 45. And now if we turn off the effects, this is before, this is after. Okay, so the directional blur kind of did its thing. However, it, it still looks a little funky and, and that's due to two reasons. One, the blur might not be high enough. So on our directional blur, let's go ahead and make a 15 and see what that does. The edges are really blurred too much. So let's go back to five. And then instead of this, let's select both, right click, nest. Now we have a nested sequence. Let's go ahead and scale this. 105-ish, we'll get rid of those black borders that we were seeing that we didn't want. And then I wanna recenter the frame a little bit. So I'm gonna drag this left a little bit and then drag it up just a tiny bit, ever so much. So now when we play this back, we have a very soft edge with chromatic aberration that fades gradually into the center that doesn't really take away from the original look of the shot. That being said, you can play with this, you can change the effect however much you want to get the look you're going for. This is the one that I kind of felt was a good match. Um, but once again, you can have a different opinion and you might want to just play with the parameters a bit until you find the sweet spot for your work. Sorry uh, for last week's delays. It just, I needed a break, but we're back. 
We're going hard. We have some films coming out. Actual, like, you know, pieces of work that are not just tutorials. I hope you guys consider watching them. Thank you again. I'll see you guys soon. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.